Hello, I'm Paul Beck with again, and uh, and uh, Mop took off on me. This is Sally. Come on, Sally, turn around, face the camera. This is Sally. Um, wonders what's going on. Not used to the uh, limelight so much. So, in this video, I'm going to continue my discussions on climate security. I'm going to continue talking about the U.S. military report that came out recently that talked about how unprepared the U.S. and the U.S. military are to uh, climate system change, abrupt climate system change that is ongoing at the moment. So I'm just going to continue uh, where I left off in the previous video. So um, this is an article which uh, this is a, the, called the Center for Climate and Security, Exploring the Security Risks of Climate Change. Okay, so it's a whole website. Um, and it talks about the Army War College study, which I referred to in the previous video. The U.S. military is precariously underprepared for climate change. Um, so this report that they put out here, The Implications of Climate Change for the U.S. Army, came out several months ago. Um, and the second sentence of the report sets the stage immediately, stating, the Department of Defense is precariously unprepared for the national security implications of climate change-induced global security challenges. So it details the most imminent threats of climate change um, that it poses to national security. So severe weather events, mass migration events, and how countries deal with them, diminishing global fresh water supplies, changing disease vectors, uh, Arctic competition as the Arctic um, thaws out, stress on the U.S. power grid and nuclear reactors, as well as sea level rise. So it talks all about those sort of things, and it highlights how diminished fresh water supplies jeopardize um, U.S. Army, especially in places that are very hot and dry. Currently, the Army relies on bottled water and local wells in the theater of operation to hydrate, tr hydrate troops, but it lacks in-house hydration capacity. So huge amounts of money are being spent to supply the troops with uh, water. So as the world grows hotter and there's more and more stresses on water, this will get even more severe talks about the pole melting at the Arctic, opening a new zone of competition for Arctic transit routes and natural resources. Um, and it talks about all of the Russian renovation of Soviet era bases and expansion of, of resources, military resources in the Arctic. Um, and uh, goes on and on. So let, I'm gonna get into the details of the actual report, but I'm gonna continue where I was, where I left off before, and that's this article here, the um, Nafis Ahmed article in mother on motherboard. U.S. military could collapse within 20 years due to climate change. Report commissioned by Pentagon says. So, I'll go down to where I left off, and I was talking about the total collapse of the power grid is a huge threat to not just the country but to the U.S. military. So the report paints a frightening portrait of a country falling apart over the next 20 years due to the impacts of climate change on natural systems such as oceans, lakes, rivers, groundwater, reefs, and uh, forests. Current infrastructure in the U.S. is woefully underprepared. Most of the critical infrastructures identified by the Department of Homeland Security are not built to withstand these altered conditions. 80% of U.S. agricultural exports and 78% of imports are waterborne. Okay, they come over the sea in container ships, in cargo ships. So episodes of flooding on coastlines due to climate change would leave lasting damage to shipping infrastructure posing a major threat to U.S. lives and communities, the U.S. economy, and global food supply. Um, 
At particular risk is the U.S. national power grid, which could shut down due to the stressors of a changing climate, especially changing rainfall levels. And we're actually seeing this occurring as I'm speaking in California with the throttling down of the power grid to try to reduce the number of wildfires that are set from power poles being knocked over by the high Santa Ana winds. The power grid that serves the U.S. is aging and continues to operate without a coordinated and significant infrastructure investment. Vulnerabilities exist to electricity generating power plants, electric transmission infrastructure, and distribution system components. Um, so extended periods of heat, drought, and cold could eventually overwhelm an already fragile system. And here's, you know, here, here's one of these connectedness diagrams where you've got key components of, of, the, of society. Okay? You've got communications, internet, switching offices. You've got oil and gas fueling it. Some gen oil and gas burn to generate electric power. You've got transportation, emergency services, government services, banking and finance, water, you know, food, of course, water and food. You know, and all of these bubbles are connected to every other bubble. So you, you, know, you start getting failures in one of these particular areas and it trickles and cascades across the entire system. So this is the essential services interconnectedness affected by power grid outages. And basically, um, the fees Ahmed, and of course, uh, you know, it's obvious to anybody, you know, keeping their eye on climate news, um, it's already playing out. The grim prediction is already playing out. Utility PG&E has cut power to more than a million people across California to avoid power lines collapsing, sparking, causing wildfires, like the one that went through um, Paradise, California, and basically incinerated the entire town a few years ago um, from Santa Ana winds, blowing over a power line, triggering the fire and causing it. In fact, many of those wildfires, you know, in that horrible year a few years ago, 2017, I believe, were from PG&E. They went bankrupt. Um, and, you know, they have, they've yet to, you know, under receivership, et cetera, they be, had these huge lawsuits against them, making them go bankrupt, and they failed to fix the state's ailing power grid. The U.S. Army report shows that this power outage in California could be a taste of things to come, laying out a truly dystopian scenario. You don't need to read science fiction. You don't need to, uh, you know, look at Netflix shows on on catastrophe scenarios you just need to basically look outside the window and look at look at the power lines in your area look at the stores providing you with food and water and medical services and everything else and in california's case they told people we're shutting the power off tomorrow they gave them a day's notice and they shut it off to try to prevent these fires trying to save the uh, the asses of pg and e let alone disrupting and causing huge economic loss and, and uh, you know, c catastrophic you know, loss of, uh, to, to people with suddenly with no power for up to a week, you know, to, to, I mean, that's not how you deal with, you know, high winds. It's absurd. If the power grid infrastructure were to collapse, the U.S. would experience, of course, these things are pretty obvious. You know, your refrigerator is gone. Loss of perishable food and medicines that have to be kept cool. Loss of water, wastewater distribution systems. As the, they don't have backup batteries, the pumps go off. You know, maybe gas generators keep them going for a short period of time, but then you run out of the gas. You can't get the gas there. Um, loss of heating, air conditioning, and electrical lighting systems. Imagine being in the north in the middle of winter when it's cold and losing all of your power or during a heat wave when you lose all of your power, loss of computer, telephone, communication systems, including airline flights, satellite networks, GPS services, loss of public transportation systems, loss of fuel distribution systems and fuel pipelines, loss of all electrical systems that do not have backup power. And if the power is off for any length of time, then you lose the backup power as well. Now, this report doesn't dwell on the implications 
but it acknowledges that a national power grid failure would lead to a perfect storm requiring emergency military responses that might weaken the ability of the U.S. Army to continue functioning at all. I think this is an understatement. It's pretty clear they wouldn't function at all. Relief efforts aggravated by seasonal climatological effects would potentially accelerate the criticality of the developing situation. Cascading effects of power loss would rapidly change the military's ability to continue operations. Don't forget the U.S. nuclear power facilities. They're at high risk of temporary or permanent closure due to climate threats. There are currently 99 nuclear reactors operating in the U.S., supplying about 20% of the country's utility-scale energy, electricity. The majority of them, some 60%, are located in vulnerable regions which face major risks, including sea level rise, severe storms, and water shortages. Not only that, many of the ones that are inland are on rivers, and during heat waves, the rivers get too hot, the water temperature is too warm, and the nuclear plant has to basically shut down because it can't cool itself. When the water intake water temperature exceeds the um, threshold uh, required uh, for cooling. Um, Domestic military operations will be necessary to contain future disease outbreaks, according to the report. There's no clear timeline except, you know, we need to be prepared for imminent surprises. Climate change is introducing an increased risk of infectious disease to the U.S. population. It's increasingly not a matter of if, but of when there will be a large outbreak, a large outbreak of uh, infectious disease, you know, a virus or bacteria or an influ you know flu for example you know areas in the south of the US will see an increase of precipitation of between 0.5 and 0.8 millimeters a day an average increase an increase in average annual temperatures of 1 to 3 degrees celsius by 2050 you know along with warmer winters then there's a proliferation of mosquitoes and ticks i bought an entire book on mosquitoes and i'll be talking lots about mosquitoes uh, soon this, in turn, will spur the spread of diseases, which may be previously unseen in the U.S., and accelerate the reach of diseases currently found in small numbers, so Zika, West Nile virus, Lyme disease, and many others. The U.S. Army will be called in to assist in much the same way it was called upon in other disasters. Detailed coordination with local, state, and federal agencies in the most high-risk regions will hasten response time and minimize risk to mission. Now, new era of endless war basically. Not only is climate change real, it's on track to create an unprecedented catastrophe that could lead to total collapse of US society without serious investments in new technology and infrastructure. So the report focuses on climate impacts, but it doesn't discuss the causes of climate change uh, in human, from human fossil fuel emissions. Now, who wrote this report? I mean, it's basically the White House Office of American Innovation, the Secretary of Defense Protecting Critical Technology Task Force, NASA's Harvest Consortium, the U.S. Air Force Headquarters Directorate of Weather, U.S. Army National Guard, U.S. State Department, okay, U.S. Army War College. Okay, um, the report not only describes the need for massive permanent military infrastructure on U.S. soil to stave off climate collapse, but pretends new foreign interventions due to climate change. So the Syrian civil war is like a taste of future international conflicts. Okay, there's no question but that the, this war was coincident with a major, or preceded by a major drought in the region, forced 1.5 million rural people into Syrian cities, um, and basically the tension and the lack of jobs in the cities started the civil war. Then it reignited a civil war in Iraq and increased tensions between the U.S. and Russia. Syria has lost about 10% of the population since the war. Millions of refugees have fled the nation, many to Europe. Canada has taken many. Increased instability in Europe and it stoked violent extremism, right-wing governments coming in. Bangladesh is another story, a ticking time bomb. Half of its 160 million strong population lives at sea level. So 80 million people will be displaced as huge, area of the country, huge areas of the country become uninhabitable due to climate impacts. You know, um, 
How will this scale, large scale of displacement affect global security in a region where nearly 40% of the world's population and several antagonistic nuclear powers are? Namely, India and Pakistan. I talked about them in previous videos. Okay, so I'll continue. Thanks for listening.